Hello. Hello. Today we... Ah, uh, yes. Hello. Hello, Sam. Uh, today we are back and Sam has something interesting to say as he partook in the in a anti-fascist brigade in Queen Queensland. I'll let you I will let you elaborate. Yes, uh, yesterday I was uh, United against fascism, unity against campaign of unity against fascism and racism. There's a Facebook link to our page. An organisation of coalition of anarchists, Trotskyists, Marxists, Leninists, who organised yesterday at a rally in King George Square, where we marched from King George Square to Queen's Park to counteract the fascist protesters and the anti, anti, anti vaxxers uh, Sam, on this point, for uh, to give context, what made them fascist? What makes them fascist is the fact that these organisations are involved far right extremist groups. There are organizations such as Liberty Alliance Australia, run by RV Yemen, known fascists who are who was involved with the unshackled movement. There are organizations that are involved that are supportive of neo Nazi ideologies and known white supremacist groups who have affiliated themselves to the anti lockdown movement and other organisations. Okay. Uh, you said to me in private conversation about how some acted towards you protesting against them. Do you care to elaborate? Well, we were protesting. We had a few people who were scrumped down and booze and a few women who yelled at us and said a few things. I laughed at him and said, hey, darling, how are you? My one elaborative joke I made was the fact that I said to them that you're only scared. Why are you scared of a tiny little freak? That's exactly what you said to your wife last night. Oh, uh, wait, you see, uh, and, and, for context, and, and for context for those listening, because me and him are prior to all the context, um, it is about, it was a protest centralised around vaccines. Um, the one he was opposing, when he was protesting against, was anti vaxxers um, Sam was Sam was supporting vaccines, and was supporting a form of mandated vaccines, which I will let you go into yourself with mindset. Okay, the Queensland government have a part, have supported the idea of mandatory vaccinations. And abandoned of all people who are not, vac not vaccinated from public buildings. And day of rage, which was caused by, caused by the far uh, right and the extremists in the anti vax movement. These peace, same people have now sent death threats to Labour Party officials. It was on the news just then in Queensland, but they both had Labour Party officials received death threats. From anti-vax protesters. Mm -hmm. They had banners which called Anastasia Palaszczuk a communist and essentially yelled at me, called me fascist, which, as we're talking, we both know is a fucking total joke, right? Indeed. So, the ideologies that have used. They have some, and Clive Palmer, a supporter of the anti vax movement, was a corrupt multi billionaire who, in Queensland, was involved with Sir Joe York and Peterson's dictatorship in the 1970s and 1980s, and now has now works in mining and the Palmer United Party that have ripped off their own workers nickel refinery in Townsville and are now 
Sam, uh, so, Sam, 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 uh, you can't see this as you have technical issues, but I'm sure my first article, it is by ABC News, anti-fax fear mongers spreading, mis spreading misinformation are targeting Australia's diverse communities, leaders, exp expert warn, warn. It's actually, I would like to point out on that point too. We actually have the son of Sam Watson, who's Sam Watson Jr. As a young, as, when I was a younger activist, Sam Watson, this, kid, this kid's father, was actually someone who I actually looked up to. I held his flag at the rally. He's an Aboriginal activist. Very prevalent in his community. Uh, and his old father was involved with the Black Panther Party when they established in Queensland in the 1970s and 1980s. Mm -hmm. I had the privilege of working with him yesterday and also with a well-known activist who brought me going with Fascist Dog. Anyway, Sam, 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 Sam. Sam, um, the article says late in it, Dr. Kazwas is an Asian studies specialist and an independent research into far right extremism, conspiracy theories, and digital activism. She said certain groups have realized marginal communities, such as those that don't have English as a first language, were having difficulties receiving health messages. The antifaxes have worked hard. They can move into these, they can move into these communities in quotations. Doctor Was said. Any thoughts on that? Well, the thoughts on it were the fact that the majority of people who were anti-vaxxers were predominantly white middle class women and predominantly elderly white middle class Australians. There were very little to know, very little to know people of colour. Or any other uh, uh, yes, this article is about Melbourne, but this principle can be applied elsewhere, can it not? Predominantly, the Brisbane rally was predominantly white Anglo Saxons. Uh, uh, okay, it said after. She explained they often appear to be kind and compassionate people presenting balanced information. When they were actually presenting anti vaccine dis disinformation. Dr. Watts says anti vax groups were purposefully going into communities at the center of the outbreaks. That is the part which could be relevant regardless of race of people. Yeah, I do think that there is a lot of problems that the Aboriginal community have had. Uh, and also, I think uh, there, there have been a lot of, there's been a lot of misinformation spread about vaccines. These right wingers have used to essentially, they don't really say they are fascists. Essentially, they will say they're libertarians, they're concerned citizens, they're patriots. We defend your right to democratic freedom. When it comes down to it, they have been involved with also attacking the CFMEU building down in Melbourne and actually carrying active gallows. And there were reports from ACL officials who had arrested and who have had information that anti vaxxers were carrying firearms in one of their rallies and had actually had a plan plot to even go and kill the Premier of Victoria. So there, there are some serious, there's some seriously fucked up shit going on with these people. Uh, later on the article, it said, the use of the word pilot, uh, Mohammed said, Mohammed is the person talking about in this, uh, was manipulated to mean experiment, which promoted Mohammed's wife, prompted Mohammed's wife to decide not to get vaccinated. Uh, Mohammed said, quote unquote, my wife doesn't want to be vaccinated. She's not interested in pursuing vaccination. Mohammed described these spreading 
inf misinformation to minorities as fear mongering, fear mongers. Uh, Mr. Hassan agreed, which is Mohammed again, uh, said people were exploiting gaps in public health messaging. They've they've infiltrated it very well. They're they're very, they're, they're consistent and persistent in their messaging. He said, "Is that true? What you found?" Well, I would even say my own sister has been a victim to this. So I really do feel this is the old and terrible thing. But when you look at misinformation, you target people, and what you've done, how it autism. I've seen the fact that what they do is for targeting the people to say about when they want to spread this misinformation. It's the same campaign tactics that Donald Trump used. Essentially, misinformation campaigns of illegitimate sources that reject the scientific and social economic realities of the world around them. Uh, right, Sam. Uh, sorry, uh, Sam. Sam. Uh, uh, then I found a Lancet uh article, which for those who aren't in the know-how for medical stuff, the Lancet is a source of authority which can be trusted by even the most those are skeptical of science, because <laughs> the Lancet is a scientific journal. Uh, so essentially, there's a decided vaccine for stuff is all bollocks. So. Uh yes, let's let me get let's, let me let me get to that, and I understand why you're being like that because you can't see my screen because of technical issues, but that's okay. Uh, the it, this 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 is one done in 2020, and it was the uh, title is the online anti-vaccine movement in the age of COVID-19. I'll try and find some relevant parts from it. Of course, it's all relevant, but I'm trying to, trying to make say the most actual relevant to what we're talking about right now. <clears throat> yeah. Here you go. Uh, the CCD hate reported divided the online anti-vaccine movement to four sometimes overlapping groups. First, campaigners work uh, for, uh, work full time to foment distrust in vaccines but they only reach 12% of the total audience that follows the anti-vaccine movement. Second, the uh, enter, uh, entrepreneurs reach around half of the vac anti-vaccine following, exposing them to advertising for products, uh, proposing to have health benefits. The CCDH reported uh, accuses... Facebook of being a front front shop for anti-vax products, directing customers online marketplaces where those products can be purchased. Uh, in one, uh, Ahmed, founder and chief of the uh, founder found and chief executive officer of the CCDH, Africa Efficacy, uh, persecuting vendors who make false claims about products, going after a few high-profile Hutchers who are who are exploiting and encouraging anti-vaccine sentiment to make money would be a powerful yeah. uh, thing to anyone else considering choosing the same path. He said, "Conspiracy theory, conspiracy theorists constitute the third category." Finally, there are the communities uh, which have a relatively small following and are mainly to be found on Facebook. Yes, uh, anything to add to that? I do like to add, by the way, I think that uh, the campaign has been done by the far right, but also I think the hesitancy of the left to actually jump on this, such as the CPA, has played a major role in the fact that when fascism raises the head, even for people without COVID-19, your objective ideologies are uh, to then ignore these dangers that come up from these free movements. Sam, can you get, uh, Sam, can be quiet back there, please? Can be quiet. In the background. Can, can you ha can be quiet in the background, please? Just so the recording doesn't end up being. Yep. Uh, yep. 
pretty loud. I was going to say the fact that the old Communist Party of Australia and the other movements did not take these fascist movements seriously, even before the COVID crisis, when there was an imminent threat by the ruling class to get people into and groom them into these anti-vax movements. But there was no movement. Now, this movement against fascism and racism is, even though it's used with socialist alternative and with anarchist and other movements, it still sets a very good precedent to start a unity campaign to fight these fascists, which has never existed before because of a disunity on the left. So this is a very good move in the right direction. Uh, it said a little later on, public attitudes towards vaccinations can be split into three categories. First, the people who have been persuaded of the merits of vaccination in the US and UK this group constitutes somewhere between 70 and 90% of the population. Second, there are dogmatic anti-vaxxers. These people are on the fringes. Uh, they are not going to change their views. Between the two groups lies a third group cons- uh, comprising of people who are undecided. These people have legitimate questions, said da da da. Uh, they want to do the right thing, but they have doubts uh, that this is what we need to be focused on, on, on our attention. Uh, the anti-vax movement looks as if it's the way you figured this out. A paper published in Nature earlier this year mapped online views on vaccinations. The author concluded that although smaller in size overall, anti-vaccination clusters managed to become highly entangled with undecided clusters in their main online network, where pro-vaccination clusters are more prevalent. They warned that in a decade, the anti-vaccination movement could overwhelm the pro-vaccination voices online. Uh, if that thing, if if that comes to, if it came to pass, the consequences the consequences would be a stretch far beyond COVID nineteen. Thoughts on that? A final assessment. Well, I do think that the interesting thing were the divisions under this crisis. <laughs> It has occurred where Anastasia Palaszczuk won the last election based on the fact that she wanted to keep the borders closed and the fact that there was a very large popular sentiment towards protecting and closing borders within Queensland to do so. This, I think, kind of came down to the fact that I do think that the majority of people Queensland did not believe or did not support the idea of allowing or taking the risk of open borders at this point. So they voted Labor back in. Where in New South Wales, the Conservatives have totally and utterly fucked this shit up big time. And I would say they're pandering under the Liberal National Government in New South Wales and Karachay. And before her, the Premier who was there, <laughs> and before her, Mayor Barry Chickland has proven to be unitedly giving the fascists and the anti vaxxers the ammunition they needed to continue their movements. Okay. And they now, as Scott Morrison, what he has said is pretty much pouring petrol on the fire. We condemn this movement, yet we understand their frustration. So you are doing the same thing Trump has done. You have a buck each way. <clears throat> okay. And a month ago, uh, right. The Guardian also did an article called Anti-Vaccine... Uh, Christo practitioners capitalizing on COVID and so misinformation. Uh, vocal minority tout their supplements as alternatives, donate large sums of money to anti vaccine organizations, organizations, and sell anti vaccine ads on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, well, yes, that's as useless as tits on a ball. So essentially. You raise awareness of the issue when it comes to 
organising legitimate campaigns to stop fascists, you refuse to acknowledge or even accept the fact that there is a major threat to Australian democracy from fascist forces. It's pretty much just more pandering and populism to try to win people to believe that the same guy is actually going to do something. Uh, sorry, sorry, it's wrong CPA. Uh, no, um, this isn't this isn't CPA, this is the Guardian Guardian, not CPA Guardian. Okay, sorry, I don't want to cut that out then, okay. I'll... Uh, no, uh, um, no, Sam, no, no, no need to cut out. Just making sure I just, I just say this right now. The Guardian Sam is on about is the Guardian, which is also what the Communist Party of Australia uses in their thing. And the reason he confused it is because the Guardian of the CPA is pretty much not that much different from mainstream publications. There we go. Uh, so Sam, this is the actual Guardian, not CPA Guardian. I won't. I would never use him as a source. Don't worry. Okay. Disclaimer done. Okay. <clears throat> this thing is talking about the US, right? This thing's talking about US. This is I'm talking about US case, but the same can be applied to these on some similar symptoms here. You know, I, I like to, I hate to interrupt you, but the one of the funniest statistics we look at are the amount of people who visit page called sorry, COVID, sorry, COVID not sorry, anti vaxxers, right? Mm hmm. And, oh, uh, I think his name's Takana. You heard of him before, he's uh, from Melbourne. Mm hmm. And anyway, uh, he's, he's, a, he's a well-known activist. He's made him on. So he's a Kiwi. He's a member of Antifa, right? Mm-hmm. But anyway, we talked about the amount of vax, anti-vaxxers who died from COVID-19, which I thought was fucking hilarious. Look at how many of them actually died from COVID. Anyway, uh, this for context this is about the US, so if it says something which isn't Australian related, that's why. But I still think it's kind of relevant. Um the pandemic gave new a new platform to a to a faction of uh Cairo practitioners who have been stirring up anti-vaccine misinformation long before COVID-19 arrived. Uh yep. Uh Cairo uh Cairo uh Kaiwo Praktik was founded in 1989, 1898, sorry, 1895. There you go, that's a better word. By Didi Palmer, a magnetic healer who argued that most disease was a result of misaligned vertebrae. Uh, in the early years, uh, it's early the subjective use of surgery and drugs, as well as the idea that germs cause disease. This may lead, this met this led to many to refuse vaccines. <laughs> the reason I said this is because there's this line here. Uh, it alleges he falsely advertised that vaccines do not stop the spread of the virus, but that but that supplements he sold for twenty four dollars per bottle plus ninety nine dollars nine dollars uh, nine shipping did. He said he he said this did not advertise the supplements. That away is fighting allegations in court. There we go, profiteering. There we, that's what I want to say. That's pretty good. I like that. That's pretty clever. This, I just wanted to add that we all we looked at what's had to happen. I think from the impact of trying to go and distance ourselves a little more from the intellectual and more on the on the rational human impact of this. Where I do think that this is going to be a major problem. Yeah, any vaxxers are. Especially with 
monastery construction and miners who are now going to get have mandatory vaccinations done. When you don't consider the fact that regional areas, if there is a code outbreak, the impact for miners and drillers such as my brother in extreme regional areas would be devastating if there was a code outbreak in Minka Farah. Sam, Sam. 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 I never had quite found its title just for people behind most vaccine hoaxes on social media, which I suppose is this is still not something really specific, but this but this can show that a few people can cause hysteria, I suppose. <laughs> Uh, it's talking about well, it's talking about the people in question after the video is up. I will link it anyway so everyone can see it after. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I'd also, I'd also like to make a plug to say that the campaign against racism and fascism, we should go and we should work. I'll link this video to their page. So I think we need to look at doing this shit because when it comes down to it, there's so much misinformation, but there are so many people out there who need to be wary of the fact that... Okay, uh, Sam? Uh, these, people, these people are not civil libertarians. Sam, I know. These are, people, these are not people who care about your rights and your welfare, and this mandate is about just opposing the overreach and authoritarianism of the government. These are people who are openly fascists, who have right-wing support from groups such as the Industrial Policy Association. Anyway, that's what I'm saying. Sam? Sam, Sam, Sam. Sam? Sam, my turn now. Um, It says later in this article, tried and true tactics. This is where they talk about how they get away with some stuff in their own opinion. Um, sometimes they skirt platforms walls by codes. Instead of saying vaccine, they may, they, they may say in a video, hold up the V sign with your fingers and say, if you're around someone who has been hold up V sign, you know, X might happen to you. Or they might take or they might take something true and distort it, such as falsely linking a famous person's death to to the fact that celebrities got vaccine days or weeks earlier. News uh news guard news new guard squared Greg, Gregory said a tried and true tactic of vaccine opponents is grossly mis- grossly misrepresenting some form of research, some form of data to promote whatever narrative they've chosen. States, it was an older comrade who had been around for years, right? Now, unfortunately, he died from COVID 19. But they spread misinformation, the right wingers did, even people in the country. They might have spread misinformation because it was aged. It's what killed it. Well, it was actually the COVID 19 vaccine, COVID 19, which actually killed it. This guy was a prominent American comrade of ours and a prominent activist in the CPUS, in the CPUSA. CPUS, sorry. So even when our comrades are going to be killed by COVID, there is going to be the lies used to dull down their debt if it was a result of COVID in elderly comrades who may have been, who may, that have, may have been affected by COVID in the US. You look that one up, why don't we actually die of COVID?
and this gentleman of, of more mature years was a very respectful comrade. So, uh, 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 yeah, uh, yes, of course, Sam. What's the name? I'm now looking up now. Name? Then how can I find it? Uh, okay. Wait, cool. Uh, regarding sources, that's all the sources I found. That's all the sources I found. Is there anything extra you want to raise up regarding? Fictitious movements from the anti vaxxers who side with the ruling class over the working class who have nearly proven their victims in a manner which would befit a pedophile to groom their victims to get them into the anti vax movement to believe that somehow they're going to protect their interests when they're really not going to. And also, there's a church in New Zealand, by the way. Which is actually involved in the anti anti vax movement, mm -hmm. where they actually do say that domestic violence is actually that is actually the uh, man's fault. Sorry, the woman's fault. And after these men have bashed their women and carried out acts of domestic violence against them. These churches show these men's programs to get them to re be a real rehabilitated. It's a church in New Zealand, which is involved with the anti vax movement. Predominantly evangelical Christian psychopaths. So, yeah, that's quite concerning that they can get a certificate in New Zealand saying that they have been redeemed, have redeemed themselves. And they say that stress on men an excuse for men to bash women and it's actually their fault so there's actually this church in new zealand providing this shit and they're involved with the act with the anti-vax movement what is the name of that thing they're in the sacred heart they're called sacred heart sacred or sacred heart so uh they're an evangelical church in new zealand Two, give me two seconds. Uh, tell me, you, uh, Sam, 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 tell me that, tell me that again. What's it called? Heart sacred or something like that. They're called hearts, heart sacred, sacred heart church. Does that right? Something like that. They're in New Zealand. They're all New Zealand. Christian Church, uh, Evangelical. Okay. Uh, are you talking about the Sacred Heart of this? What I found is Sacred Heart, yes, uh, yeah. Sacred Heart Cathedral, Wellington. You sure, I, I, I'm just making sure just your context. That's all. Uh, there's one of their members who's Takahana, Waikahana, his name is, or and he actually provided the idea of this men's program they run, which is a men's program that blames women for domestic violence. <clears throat> Wait, I'll leave the final note on your end and then I will cut the recording. What what do you want to end it off by saying with? What I want to end up by saying is the fact that you really, really need to start to rebuild the left. Because it doesn't matter whether you're an anarchist, communist, Marxist, Leninist, or what colours you are. This virus does not discriminate. And the anti-vaxxer movement and these fascists do not discriminate either. 
they are targeting working class people and they are going to go and show that they're going to try to carry out the idea of the ideology of economic sabotage of the economies to then blame. And let's not forget the fact that the anti China sentiment is terrible uh, in these movements as well. So I want to end it on that note to let them know that, let anyone know that this is where we have to be involved. You actually can play a role. You need to get involved with our organisation movement. You need to get involved with anti fascist and communist movements to fight, of course. You are, going, you are a part of the working class, whether you're unemployed or not. You belong, and we all belong to the working class. We are the victims, not these assholes who play martyr and pretend to go nail ourselves to the fucking cross somewhere and play martyr to suit their own agenda. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. And with that, I'll be saying goodbye for now.